Hey everyone, good evening and welcome to another Wednesday night Bible study with the Nicholasville Church of Christ. Whether you're watching this on YouTube or on Facebook, uh, we're glad that you're joining us tonight. Our passage from the book of James is a shorter one tonight. It wraps up a unit in James that has been focused on conflict and division among believers and what can be done to bring about peace and healing. Even though it's a shorter passage, I think it's going to have a lot of really valuable things for us to think about and reflect on. And you might also recognize or might might hear some language from Jesus in our passage tonight as well. But before we get into it, let's first begin by going to God in prayer. Father, we love you. We thank you for this time we can spend in your word. We pray that you bless us as we read and as we focus. Help us to apply this in our lives and apply it faithfully. Father, we lift up people we know who are facing difficult times among our church family, and we pray for those who are hurting or grieving or facing different trials. Uh, Lord, we also know that beyond our church family, this whole world right now has been facing so many difficult things related to this pandemic and to other challenges of, as well that have filled pretty much our entire year. We pray for the sick. We pray for their healing. We pray that you'll keep those who are healthy healthy. Uh, we pray for this pandemic to pass soon, and Father, we pray that you'll bless your kingdom, whether um, your kingdom is facing a pandemic or, or on the other side of a pandemic. We pray that always we'll reflect you and show you to others and put our trust fully in you. Thank you for loving us. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so our passage for tonight is James chapter 4, verses 11 and 12, so it's only two verses tonight. James 4, 11 and 12. James says, Do not speak evil against one another, brothers. The one who speaks against a brother or judges his brother speaks evil against the law and judges the law. But if you judge the law, you are not a doer of the law, but a judge. There is only one lawgiver and judge, he who is able to save and to destroy. But who are you to judge your neighbor? So again, you're probably hearing echoes of a famous and very often quoted teaching of Jesus in this passage, so I'd like to go ahead and read that as well. That's from Matthew chapter 7, verses 1 through 5 in the Sermon on the Mount. Jesus says, Judge not that you be not judged, for with the judgment you pronounce you will be judged, and with the measure you use it will be measured to you. Why do you see the speck that is in your brother's eye, but do not notice the log that is in your own eye? Or how can you say to your brother, Let me take the speck out of your eye, when there is the log in your own eye? You hypocrite! First take the log out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your brother's eye. And we might also hear uh, the words of Paul in this passage. Uh, I'd like to pull up Romans 14, verse 4. This is in the midst of uh, Paul talking to some Christians who choose to eat meat while others are choose to abstain from eating meat. And he's trying to say that both sides are capable of honoring God with their dietary choices. This is Romans 14, of verse 4. Who are you to pass judgment on the servant of another? It is before his own master that he stands or falls, and he will be upheld, for the Lord is able to make him stand. So here in James, he condemns both speaking evil against one another and judging one another. And if we wanted to make some fine distinction between those two things, I suppose we could, but James basically lumps them together in these two verses. And by the time we reach the end of verse 12, his focus is entirely on judging one another. And that indicates that this is primarily what he intends to address. And really, of course, one can't really speak evil of someone without likely judging them as well, uh, or vice versa. And so it's easy to see how these two ideas belong together. Some of you may remember about a year ago when Kevin and I preached through the Sermon on the Mount, and it fell to me to preach on what Jesus says in the passage that we read a moment ago about judging. And I won't cover all of that here, but the application of this teaching by Jesus and also the teaching uh, in James tonight, the application uh, in our world often comes out in the phrase, don't judge me. And unfortunately, what that phrase normally means under the surface is, don't disagree with my choices. So many teachings all throughout the Bible about honoring what is good and avoiding what is evil and calling evil uh, for what it is, calling out evil for what it is when we see others committing it or when we realize that we've committed it ourselves. So many teachings like this go against this particular understanding of Jesus' teaching and also of James's teaching as well. 
Jesus' illustration in Matthew 7 of trying to pull a speck out of someone's eye when there's an entire plank in our own eye, I think makes it clear that, that he condemns trying, trying to evaluate or fix other people without first taking an honest look at ourselves. And James's combination of judging with also this language of speaking evil against one another and then also his reference to God as the one true judge, that all suggests that he is condemning passing judgment on things that we're just not in a position to pass judgment on. We may be able sometimes to determine someone's motives by what they say and what they do, but we're definitely not in a position to say that we always know what is going on in someone, someone else's mind or what the state of their heart is. In the same way, we may be able to sometimes determine whether or not a person should have known better before they did something, but we don't know their whole history and we don't know how that whole history has, has shaped them. We're just not in a position to make sweeping judgments about individuals, uh, groups, or, or societies the way that God is. God knows every word that a person speaks, every thought that a person has. Uh, he even knows a person's deepest motivations that the, that, that person may not be aware of uh, because they're buried away in their subconscious. God knows all of those types of things, but we don't know those things. And James seems to be telling his audience that if they take the burden of knowing those things on themselves and, and make the type of sweeping judgments that only God can make, then they themselves are guilty of evil, even while they are busying themselves talking about the evils, or at least the perceived evils, of other people. This ties in nicely with the message that Kevin brought us on Sunday uh, when he was, he was warning us that we need to watch out lest we become the very thing that we hate. And in busying ourselves with passing judgment on others, we commit sin ourselves and thus ironically become worthy of judgment. James says also that when we speak evil against a brother or sister, we speak evil against the law and judge the law. You might remember back in chapter 2, in verse 8, when James talks about the royal law, which is to love one's neighbor uh, as himself, and in that same passage in verse 12, he talks about the law of liberty. And we mentioned there that James doesn't seem to have the law of Moses in mind, but instead the, um, the more general law of God, the will of God. And so to follow the law in James seems to mean something like doing God's will. And again, this is a very Jewish letter, and this is a way of referring to God's will that would fit very well uh, coming from that perspective. And so when we speak evil against or judge our neighbor, our neighbor, we speak evil against and we judge God's law. Now this might sound a little bit confusing at first. It's, it's not immediately obvious how speaking evil against someone means speaking evil against God's law or judging God's law. But it seems that since following God's will involves submitting to him as the one true judge of all people, then when we take his place in passing judgment, we kind of ironically show that we're not really following God's will in this regard, which in turn shows that we're not taking God's will as seriously as we might think. And so James seems to be saying that speaking evil against and judging another person um, kind of puts down or shows disdain for taking God's law seriously. James says that if we judge the law, we are not a doer of the law, but a judge of it. And this would seem to support our explanation that speaking evil against the law uh, and judging the law means to, to not take it seriously, to not actually be doing it. And James cares quite a bit about doing the will of God in this letter. Just as a review, he says back in chapter 1 uh, that we should be doers of the word, not hearers only. Uh, he says that pure and undefiled religion is looking out for the marginalized, looking out for orphans and widows and doing things to, to help those who are in need. He says that faith without works is dead. Our faith is only alive if it is an active faith. And so it makes sense that James would say, that we need to get busy seriously following God's law instead of judging others and thus showing that we don't actually follow it ourselves. And the job of passing judgment on others belongs ultimately to God and God alone. 
he alone can give an authoritative judgment on someone else. And also, he alone can back that judgment up with the blessings or with the punishments that should be given in light of that judgment. And so that compels James to say, who are we to judge our neighbor? Now, again, I don't see how this can mean that we can't call good good and evil evil or that we can't condemn certain behaviors or attitudes when we see them. There are too many passages in the Bible that call us to be discerning and unwavering about these types of things. But we just don't have the knowledge or the wisdom to claim that we've got all people figured out and we know exactly what they're thinking and why they're doing what they're doing or we know exactly what they deserve. Only God can do that. And so only God can render that kind of judgment. So instead of speaking evil of one another and passing judgment on one another, James wants us to be busy doing the will of God, following God's law. So this short passage wraps up an extended unit in James that deals quite a bit with conflict and strife and how to bring about peace. Uh, he first told us that wisdom is found in doing good and doing it with gentleness. He said that quarrels and fights come from conflicting passions and desires that are connected to friendship with the world, and stopping these quarrels requires turning back to God, and it requires humbling ourselves before Him. And now he's saying that his readers should no longer speak evil against and judge one another, but should instead get on with doing God's will and leave the judgment up to God. So to boil it down even further, James says to do good, submit to God, and let him take care of everyone else. Do good, submit to God, and let him take care of everyone else. Now I realize that might sound like some overly simple, uh, maybe even cliche advice, and part of that is because we're boiling things down, and I encourage you to go back and read through this unit uh, in its entirety, but even still, this is essentially how James addressed real problems going on in the churches that he's writing to. And so this isn't hypothetical or cliche to James. The problems were real, and his instructions were real. 2020 has had its own share of problems that have created divisions. And really, it's, these problems have created divisions all over this planet. We're in the middle of a pandemic, and people disagree over what should be done about it. Our country has wrestled with and continues to wrestle with its racial history and people disagree over how much that history carries over into the present and what should be done about it. And these types of divisions are only going to keep on going. This is an election year, which of course always fills our atmosphere with a variety of opinions on controversial topics. And if we took a sample of 10 to 15 people and put them in a room, whether these people go to church together or are part of the same family, or if we just took random people off the street, we would find differing perspectives on all of these things. I think James has some real wisdom that can be inserted into our world right now. The wise disciple of Jesus asked themselves what good they can do for others at this time, and they devote themselves to doing it. The wise disciple knows that when a disagreement turns into a bitter, angry dispute, there is a deeper problem beneath the surface that can only be dealt with when people take submission to God seriously. And the wise disciple knows that God is the one who can fully account for the actions and the motivations of others. And so instead of getting preoccupied with those things, they will commit themselves to doing God's will. If we put James's wisdom into practice, I think we will be richly blessed, and I think we will richly bless others. And I'm not saying that we should overlook um, important issues in our world and pretend that they're not happening. Uh, James is not calling for a weak type of unity that really just pretends that differences don't exist. That is not the cure for division in James. But determining how to best engage the world around me how to best love my neighbor, and how to best love my brothers and sisters in Christ, it begins with these principles. It begins with following James's teachings about how a wise disciple of Jesus should live. 
So thank you. I hope that you found this uh, encouraging tonight, and I hope to see many of you again on Sunday, but I hope you have a good rest of the week.